See, we're supposed to start late. We need okay. to start I'm sorry, 10 seconds. I'm sorry, everybody. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so let's start. Let's start. Sorry, we're in a different location, different technology going on tonight. You listen. Don't worry, it's easy. Okay. Oh, come in, come in. Where's your microphone? Okay. Torah Memtes, Tinyana Memtes, we have to start. A little late tonight. We uh, had some technical difficulties here. Okay, let's start. Tinyana Memtes. If we would consider how great God is, how exalted, how high He is, godless and Romamus, one of you guys maybe oh, doesn't matter. Baalma, with one slight movement, with one glance, with one wrong movement, we see, and with one one, one wrong glance. Shaino Kuroi. If a person would make <clears throat> even the slightest movement off against Hashem, or he would look at something in a way that HaKadosh Baruch was not so happy with, because HaKadosh Baruch was so big in the entire world, he is the entire world, the entire world is him. Then unfortunately, what's befitting a person who rebels against the king, which means either a serious punishment, or death, chasashom chasashom should happen. To rebel against the king is the most serious crime in the entire kingdom. And the bigger the king is, the more that his he rules over. So, God, who rules over everything in the world, there's not a person who breathes without God. So, therefore, if a person would make even a slight movement, right? the wrong way according to what God wants, certainly worse things than that, one should be chayv, punishment, right? Could be even chayv so you're bowing against the king, you're doing something that God doesn't want. Yes? So that sounds very, that sounds very bleak. Ah, says Rabbi Nachman, Hashem is baruch mali rachamim, but a Kodesh baruch is filled with compassion, filled with love. The and the entire world is filled with his Rahmanas. Every ounce of this world, every molecule of this world is filled with his, with his Rahmanas. We'll explain in one second. Vuhu wrote Maod Baholam. And Kurdish very much very much wants this world. Kurdish Baruch doesn't need this world. The Pasik tells us, Olam Chesed Yibana. Right, this whole world, Olam, Chesed Yibana, Hashem built a world of Chesed. That means God didn't need this world. He was very fine the way he was in that time before there was a world. So why did he create the world? What was the reason for it? Ultimate question. We can, the only thing that we can come up with for him to do Chesed, for him to be a mate of. That's what the Rizal says, that's what others farms say, for him to do good. He doesn't need anything. It's the Olam Chesed Yibani. He built a world purely out of Chesed. There's never been a more pure Chesed since, since creation. Creation is the most pure Chesed. Right? Olam Chesed Yibani. Now, you got to imagine here that this whole world is one big Sadaka project. Okay? This whole world is one big Sadaka project. Now, when you have a person who starts a it's a double project let's say let's say things don't go so well for whatever it is the collecting is not going well or he's not able to give it to people so well uh, people are bothering him whatever whatever it is it could be what will happen shut it down no more stock project i'm done with this they're frustrating me they're bothering me i'm done i can't do it it's not it's not a, it, the chesed doesn't work i want to help people i really do these people are really really bothering me or this is not working out i'm done <clears throat> now According to his altruism, if I could use such a word, right? according to his, his pure, selfless love of people, of tzedakah, he'll be able to last longer. Right? When things don't go his way, he'll say, okay, it's not about me. 
It's about these people. And even if, if, if things are going rough, things are hard, not going exactly the way I want, but nevertheless, I'm, the whole purpose is I'm selfless here. I'm not gaining anything from the tzedakah. It's, it's a non-profit, not-for-profit. I'm spending all my extra time doing this, but not for myself. So he'll last even longer, correct? Now, why does he have God? Who there is not even a, an ounce of selfishness. Not an ounce. The whole world is 100% a tzedakah project. Rachmanus. Every ounce of the world is filled with his Rachmanus. Because the entire creation of every ounce of this world is from his pure chesed. He doesn't need this cup. This cup is 100% chesed Hashem. Kol shekenos, who do things sometimes against the king. But if we human beings rebel against the king and we do a virus, or we do things that he doesn't want us to do, so if a Kaddish Baruch Hu was a selfish CEO, project's over, I'm going to fire him. But he's not. He's the greatest project manager, CEO we've ever had in the entire world. Because it's pure selflessness. So therefore, even if people do things that are wrong, his rachmanis, his compassion, his mercy is so much more than the bother we cause him. And therefore the project goes on. Vuhu rotze ma'od ba'olam. God really wants this world. If he didn't really want the world, it wouldn't be here. Every second that the world is in existence, every second that each one of us is in existence, each second that this cup is in existence, it comes from one thing. Rotzan Hashem, the will of God. If a God didn't will it, it would disintegrate. Correct? Therefore, even though Kaddish Baruch is so big, and he's the biggest king, and if we do anything against him, it's rebelling against the king. But the whole world was created with his Rachmanas. And therefore, his Rachmanas is a constant, never, it's unbroken. That gives us a lot of chizik. Because you have a lot of people who, if they make a mistake, oh, what's going to be with him? What's going to be with my rebel against the king? If he cares. If he doesn't care, he doesn't care. Let's see a person who cares. And he tries to do good. But once and again and again and again, he's falling, he's making mistakes. So he could feel really bad. He's like, I'm not doing well over here. They're going to fire me. I'm going to get very nervous. But if we believe that a Kaddish Baruch has the most Rahmanas in the entire world, so that's a chizik. He's not going to fire me because he loves me, because he cares about me, because my entire existence is his mercy from the day I was born to the second now and everything in between. Yes? So it tells us, Rabbi Nachman, okay, therefore, if a person believes that and that's in his heart, a person should strengthen himself in his avodah. Whatever you can do, don't become depressed. Don't be miyayish when things aren't going so well, when you're not doing so well. I didn't dive well today, I didn't learn well today, I had a bad week, I had a bad month, I had a bad year. So what? Kashbuch has more rachmanus than you have on yourself. He has more rachmanus on you. Even if a person is who he is, he's not doing so well. HaKadosh Baruch Hu's compassion for us is limitless. The whole world already is a limitless amount of mercy. Why did he create the world? Out of his mercy, out of his chesed. So what, because a little me makes a mistake, so he's going he's gonna to fire me. Look what's going on in the world. And he lets the world go the way it's going. Yes? So culture came to me. Who does? Sometimes I do good things. This is a chizik to a person who thinks once in a while he's not doing so good. Sometimes you have people who, if they would, you have a, you have a kid, you have a kid, that the kid is, uh, is the kid has, he's misbehaving. He's misbehaving. Sometimes if the parent looks at him in the wrong way, or even if not, the kid feels bad. I don't say without the parent looking at him in the wrong way. The kid feels bad. And he continues, because of his own bad feelings, he continues to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And I've seen this with my own, my own kids. Because he feels bad about what he did. He did something that was, it was show big. It was by accident. He threw a ball and hit his sister in the eye and she's crying. Right? It was by accident. He feels bad. She's bawling her brains out. Now he feels bad. So if you just keep the situation status quo and just look at him, his bad feelings will continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and he might do something else bad. 
Benazir now. But if the father would go over to him and said, don't worry, it's okay. It was a mistake. And you give him a lot of love. Don't forget, now he's not feeling good about himself. You have to give him more love than you would usually give him. Then you may be able to prevent anything further from happening. And then you can bring him back and he can understand that it was just a show. It was a mistake. Correct? But if you don't, and you just watch the kids, see what's gonna, how he's going to react, then he, his bad feelings will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Therefore, Rabbi Nachman is telling us, even though Kaddish Baruch Hu can't talk to us physically every single time we do something wrong, Rabbi Nachman the Tzadikim have to tell us, Kaddish Baruch Hu loves us, and he cares about us, and he has mercy on us. He's compassionate no matter what we do. And especially if it was a show gig, if it was by accident. He says, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Look at the whole world. Look at my mercy on the whole world. Kol Shekin, all the more so you. Who's a good yid. You're a good person. You understand? This, this is, holds a person. It's machazik a person. It gives a person strength to continue on and not fall into a deeper, deeper pit of depression because of one mistake he made. This happens all the time. A person makes one mistake, and before he knows it, he's in a terrible depression. Because of that one little mistake. One little mistake turns into one bad day. One bad day turns into one bad week, turns into a bad month. It's a downward spiral. So we're not going to stop that. That's ridiculous. You're still alive, yeah? You're still alive. That means he wants you to be alive. Therefore, he has compassion on you. Compassion for you. And one should depend and rely on that amazing Rahmanas. Use it. Hashem wants us to use it. Kashbuch will never leave a person. Avam over Mashavra, it doesn't matter what the person does. Kashbuch will never lose the person. So I'll tell you, my Rebbe, Ramosha Weinberger, this past Sunday, he gave a share about this Indian itself. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story he told, an unbelievable story. It's a little bit scary. He told, he told us that he got a call from the father, who there was a, this father had a child that uh, was, was going off the derech. He was doing things wrong, and he was quickly losing his, his Torah, his mitzvahs. And he was a good, he was, in, he was in yeshiva, and he was good in yeshiva, but slowly but surely he was spiraling out of control to the point that he wasn't keeping Shabbos, he wasn't showing my Torah mitzvahs anymore. And one day the father looks at his, his phone, and he sees on the phone that, the, that the ch- his son was watching ministers, galacha watching their drushes, their Sunday preachings. Yeah, the, kids, the father's going out of his mind. Like, Whoa, what's going on? He now wants to go to another religion? He's already not doing well. Now he wants to go to a different religion? What is this? He's going crazy. So, so he calls Rav Weinberger, calls my Rebbe, and he says, can my son speak to you? So Weinberger says, listen, if, if, if he, the kid wants to talk to me, I'll talk to him. So they get have a meeting. And Weinberger asks the boy, he says, what's going on with his ministers? What are you, what are you watching these for? What's, what do you get at this? It's, it's 10% right? what, are you, what are you gaining? What are you gaining from the, from the ministers? So, so the boy says, I'll tell you. Really, really, Yashka doesn't do it for me. Oh, so Ish, that's not why I'm watching. But why am I watching? Because you know what these, you know what these ministers are telling me? That God loves me. For all my years in yeshiva, I never heard those words. That God loves me. That's because he didn't learn Rabbi Nachman. So Robert was taken by that, obviously. And he was telling us, he says, you have, you have to let people know. You have people have to learn. Torah Tinyan Memchit and Memtes and every other Torah Rabbi Nachman. Which is, his, Rabbi Nachman came into this world. If not for this, then for what? To tell people, Kosh Baruch loves And he cares about you. And if you make mistakes, You'll get better. Well, you never made a mistake in your life. No, nobody's ever made a mistake. We're so hard on ourselves. If your kid made a mistake, you throw him out the door, one mistake, that's it. Off with your head, kick him out of the house? No. So why are we so hard on ourselves? So we're not going to stop this. He's in the yourself. Rely on Hashem's Rahmanas. There's mercy for us. He wants you to do better. So you had a bad day. So you're not the best daughter in Yeshiva. So what? So what? Okay. And I'll tell you, there's a Zohar. The Zohar says like this. I'll just read it. I'll just translate it here. 
The day is Rosh Hashanah, Yom Hadin. Okay? Rosh Hashanah is the Yom Hadin, the day of judgment. The king is sitting on the chair of judgment. Right? Melech Hashem is sitting on the chair, ready to judge. And all the prosecutors are ready to prosecute. So the table's set. Everything's ready to go. King's there, prosecutors are there. But what happens? Even though a Kaddish Baruch Hu, it says a Kaddish Baruch Hu loves Din, a Kaddish Baruch Hu is the Oweb Mishpat, right? A Kaddish Baruch Hu is the Oweb Mishpat, he loves Mishpat, the Pasuk says. Hashem loves Din. Ki ani Hashem Oweb Mishpat, Hashem loves Mishpat. In Kol Zeh, listen to this line. A Kaddish Baruch Hu loves Mishpat, he loves Din. And therefore, people have to get judged, right? And a person does bad, a person is doing a virus, so Hashem has to take care of that person. But what does the Zohar tell us? Nevertheless, HaKadosh Baruch Hu's love for his children, for Kala Yisrael, is bigger than his love for Din, for judgment. That's what the Zohar tells us. That's what Rishim Barachai tells us. And when the Ketrugim, when the prosecutors want to get us, Hashem says, blow the shofar. In order to awaken the mercy of God, it's on our side. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves Din. The whole world has to be created with Din, or it would be anarchy, it would be Hefker, it would be crazy. The world runs me the but at the end of the day, Kaddish Baruch loves us more than that me the You understand? And therefore, if a person does something b'shogeg or even b'mezid, person makes a mistake and he needs to be judged for it. So how should he judge himself? Think about it. Should we judge ourselves any harsher than God judges us? For Kaddish Baruch who's ready to let us off the hook because he loves us so much, that doesn't mean we don't do tshuva. We'll talk about that. Of course, he does tshuva. But if a Kaddish Baruch is ready to let us off the hook, and if we're still alive, what do I say? If you're still alive, that means Hashem loves you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. If you're still alive, that means Hashem wills you to be here. Because there's nothing in this world that can be here without the will of God. This cup is here because the, Hashem wills this to be. That's what we believe. And if He didn't will it to be, it would not be here. So if I'm still here, and you're still here, it means He wants us here. And therefore, we shouldn't judge ourselves any harsher than He judges us. It's a big chizik. There's a lot of people who, who, are, who need this chizik. Tell them. Tell them this. It's Rabbi Nachman's telling us. Hashem will never leave a person. Says Rabbi Nachman, however I, the past is I, it's gone. What happened in the past is over. The ha'ikr, says Rabbi Nachman, the main thing in your life is mikan u'lahabo lo yasali. Just don't do that again. The past it happened. You made a mistake. Go fight it. Don't think about it. Don't kill yourself over it. Don't sweat. Don't make things worse. Right now, you did what you did. Right now, the ichor is the now. Try not to do it again. Try not to do this maisa again, whatever very you did, and not even to think about that maisa again. A person stole, so don't, clearly don't steal anymore. That's obvious. But also don't think about stealing. Shave v'altasa, shave sit v'altasa, don't do. Which means don't think about the past too much because those thoughts can make a person crazy and become depressed by it. And thinking about the past will limit and stop your progress in the now. You can't daven well, you can't learn well if you're thinking about last week's sins. It's just not possible. The Tanya talks about this also. The Tanya talks about, it says a person should do tshuva for a little bit every day and then go write it. Don't think about it. So a person has to move on because the ik of a person's life is now, not yesterday. Because if you're always living yesterday, then you're never living now. And that's a destruction of who you are, because who I am right now is now. So I'm always thinking about the past, I'm living in the past, I destroyed my now. I won't be able to dive along with learn well, I won't have good relationships. You're gonna destroy everything in the now. Does that make sense? So the way to do that, of course, is to fill, fill yourself up with feelings that God loves me and he's compassionate for me. Because the more you think that, the more you can move on. That's what we're not going to teach us. If you don't think God's compassionate and you're always nervous, you're looking behind you, when's he going to get me? 
then you're not living in the now. You're living in the past. And it's going to become a downward spiral, a dark, dark spiral downward. But if a person thinks that God loves him and God wants him to do better, then you can move on, right? We discussed last week, anybody who, was paying, who, who saw the share and who listened, we discussed last week about the, the unfortunate natural negativity of people. We said that, we said Tumash Shalom, right? We said Tumash Shalom, that if a person has a big white oak tag, right, a big white oak tag and a little black dot, and you ask somebody, what do you see? A right, big white oak tag and a little white dot, what do you see? So a person will inevitably tell you, I see the black dot. And you say, what do you mean you see the black dot? Don't you see all the white around it? Right, because we focus in on the black dot sometimes of our lives. But then we told, we said another mushroom. We said the mushroom of what? Rabbi Nachman. What's Rabbi Nachman's mushroom? We have a big black oak tag. Big black oak tag. Tiny little white dot somewhere in the corner. You ask the person, what do you see? I see a, bl- a big black oak tag. Right, a person in his life, he's not doing so well. He feels like he's a big black oak tag. Now, he happens to have some goodness to him. But if you ask a guy, listen, analyze yourself right now. How do you feel? I feel like a big black oak tag. And even if he was doing really well, but he made one mistake, right? He's a good guy and he makes, he makes a little mistake. And you say, how do you feel? I feel like a big black dot. A big black dot. You're, 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 you're a big white oak tag. Not a big black dot. There's a tiny little black dot there. For some reason, we have a natural negativity. But how does God look at us? Even if it would be, even if it would be that we were a big black oak tech, which we're not. Most people are, are good. But even if it would be that we were a big black oak tech with a tiny little white dot in the corner, you know what God would find? What would he find? What does he only look at? What does he only care about? The white dot. Why? Why doesn't he care about all that other stuff that a person's doing wrong? Why does he only care about that white dot? You know why? Because he is the white dot. You understand that? That little goodness that a person has in him, that tov, that nuku, the tov that Rabbi Nachman talks about, what is that? Well, it's just like a good, it was just a good maisa that one time he uh, did a chesed. That's what Rabbi Nachman's talking about, the nuku, the tov. It's godliness. It's elokus. It's God himself. That's what it is. So when God's looking at us, he only sees white dots because he only sees himself. That's all he cares about. If you have a white dot, that means you're alive. And if you're alive, you can expand that. Does this make sense? Is it, you have to change this perspective. It will save a lot of davenings. It will save a lot of learnings. It will save a lot of brachos. It will save a lot of relationships. People walk around all day depressed because of a little tiny something that happened and he feels bad about it. it it'll keep snowballing all day. We have to change this whole Indian. Change the whole perspective. He loves us. He always finds the Nakuda Tov within us, and therefore we should find the Nakuda Tov within ourselves. Says Rabbi Nachman, Ki Gam Hamachshava, Shal Anashim Keilu He Gam Kein Asiyah. So Rabbi Nachman said, you have to right now. The Iker is stop doing what you're doing. You got to just stop Averis the best you can. Stop worrying about the past, but right now you got to stop. Whether it's in action or even in Machshava. Why machshava? Usually a thought you're not punished for. Gemara tells us, you're not punished for bad thoughts. So Renachman says, because by this person, his machshavas are actions. Kigamba olam ha'asiyah yesh machshava. Because even in this world, olam ha'asiyah, the world of action, in this world, I have to put tefillin on. I can't just think about tefillin. Right? I actually have to give money to the guy if I want. Right? We have to do actions in this world. Even in this world of action, machshava does matter. Machshava, right, if I would think, if I would just think in my head right now about uh, whatever it would be, nothing, nothing is gonna, not going to affect anything. Right? If I think right now that I want to blow up uh, you know, some garbage can or something, is the garbage can going to get blown up? No, because... Machshava, 
is not in the world of Asiya. In Asiya, I have to take a bomb and blow up a garbage can if I want to blow up a garbage can. My mind can't do that. Yes? But there are some times where the machshavas do take effect in this world. Therefore, a person has to be um, he has to stop and not do, not proactive, but uh, what's the other word? Passive. passive, thank you. You have to be passive in action. Certainly don't do theirs, but don't even think of better things. So what's Rabbi Nachman talking about? What's this machshava? So I think it's like this. The Gemara and tells us, we know that there's a concept called machshava mitzvah for the mice. Machshava tova, if you have a good thought, you want to do a mitzvah, but some onus happens. You want to give money to tzedakah, you're on the way, and the ani runs away. Runs away. You can't give him the money. So HaKadosh Baruch considers it as if you gave him the money. So the Quran says, so it was machshava tova, counts mm. as if you did the mitzvah. Yeah? But the Gemara tells us by a virus, it's not that way. If a person thinks about geneva, stealing all day long, no penalties, not going to get punished, nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. The Gemara brings a Pasuk that seems to say, we're not going to go through it right now, it's a Gemara Kedush and Daphne Menorov. The Gemara seems to say that there are machshavas, there are thoughts that one gets punished for. So the Gemara says, my high, what is that talking about? So the first answer of the Gemara is a Vodazara. If a person thinks about a Vodazara, that's already a mice, that's like an action of a Vodazara and you're punished for it. Then the Gemara says, says another answer. It says, there's a concept the Gemara tells us that if a person does an Avera and he does it a second time, the Gemara says, it becomes Mutter. If a guy does an Avera once, he does an Avera twice, the Gemara says, it becomes Mutter. The Gemara says, Mutter? It becomes Mutter to do an Avera? Can't. The Gemara says, no, it's Nechshav Kehetik. It becomes like it's Mutter. Because when you do something again and again, it becomes Ragil, you become accustomed to it. Ki'ilu, like it's mutter, not it's mutter. So Gemara says, that's where a machshava is going to be a problem. If you have a person who's doing an Aveiro, he did the Aveiro once, twice, three times. So if he's sitting in his house and he's thinking about that Aveiro, that's where your machshava is an actual Aveiro. Generally thinking about an Aveiro doesn't, doesn't do anything, doesn't affect you. But if you've already done this Isra one, two, three times, the Gemara Paskins, that you're thinking about it actually isn't a vera. You're not going to get Malchus. No one knows. It's all between you and God. But it's a problem. That's what Menachem is saying. That a person like this, <clears throat> these people who, are, who have done a Yisurim again and again, who are broken by them, they don't want to do them, but they've done them, don't think about that Yisurim anymore. Certainly don't do it, but you can't think about it either because if you think about it, you're back in the same place, Mamash. Because it shows that your true is never really a true. So let's finish up. He says, though, that which happens, memela. person's trying not to do an Isser. It happened, memela. Don't pay attention to it. Don't let it bother you. It doesn't mean you're trying not to do it. A person wants to be show right now. He doesn't want to see things that he shouldn't see. So he's controlling himself. He gets up to walk wherever he has to walk, and something walks right by him, something inappropriate, and he happens to see for a second. So you have a chance now. So what happens now? So do I say that I'm, I'm still uh, an avaryan, and I should go into a depression? So Zerachim says, no way. You want to do good. You're trying to do good. It happened to come your way. You, you just got to go fight. Don't let the machshavas bog you down. Because a person who's already, he's teeter-tottering because he doesn't feel so good about himself. Any machshavara, any bad thought about himself can lead him to a state of depression, to a black hole mamash. So when happens to stop thinking about the past, break off the past. Why? How can I break off the past? I did something wrong. I feel so bad about myself. No, because God, you're still alive. And God's mercy for you is limitless. God didn't need to create the world. Why did he create the world? Because he wants to do chesed. So he wants, to, I'm, a pro, I'm, a, I'm a tzedakah project of God. I'm okay with that. I'm God's tzedakah project? I'm okay with that. He, he believes in me. He trusts me. Or else I wouldn't be here. We have to believe that. And that, that's something that we could rely on. 
and that comes down to strengthen us for our whole life. So we'll just read a few more lines quickly here. If you want to know what real tshuva is, it comes from a Rambam, it comes from a Gemara. Kishadam over Beilam Akomo is mamisha in the tshuva. A person goes back to the same place he was in, right? The place that he made a mistake in. If you get back into the same situation that you were once in and you made a mistake, and you get back, everything's the same. You're in the same place. It's the same iser. The situation is the same. Nevertheless, you turn your face from that iser, from that avera. You don't do it again. The kofi yitzro, and you subdue your yitzro heart. The vli lasas own mashasa. And you stop doing what you what you did. You don't do now what you once did. Zeu ikar tshuva shlema. That's tshuva shlema v'rag zen ikar tshuva. Only that's tshuva. So to think about the past, to worry about the past, to be depressed about the past, in a certain way, that doesn't mean anything unless you actually don't do it again. So Rabbi Nachman says, stop worrying about all the past stuff. Strengthen yourself now. Be mechazik yourself now. And forge on. Go weiter from a Kaddish Baruch Hu's love for you. That could take you mamash to the end zone. We should be zochim to Hashem to pick this up next week. We have to finish this Torah next week. Torah Tinyan Memtes.